for you. I was, as Bill said, an eager participant uh, at that wonderful, glorious event uh, in Battery Park in downtown Burlington when a thousand weary souls completed a long and extraordinarily important march to speak out against global warming and speak about the urgency that we finally do something. And it was wonderful to me because it caused politicians, people running for office, to take notice that global warming is real, it's urgent, and it requires immediate action. I also was just thrilled on a personal level. When I was uh, the age of many of you here, uh, I was in college and working in the civil rights movement. And you know, I, we don't make progress on the fundamental moral issues that face our country without the leadership of young people who insist that we have to take up action because it's the right thing to do. It's our moral obligation to do it. And what I am so excited about serving in Congress is that I am sensing that young people around this country, led by folks in Middlebury, and that's no exaggeration, are focusing the urgency and intention and moral clarity on this question of global warming that is overdue. And we'll get in questions and answers about what to do to make sure you don't end up with a tepid bill when Earl Blumenauer and I hope Peter Welch is serving you in Congress. But I want to say this. This election is really about whether we're going to restore a sense of purpose and urgency about attacking problems that we know we can attack. Global warming foremost among them. We can make progress on it. You know, in Vermont, we passed a bill that had a clean energy fund instead of what they did in Congress, where they gave billions in tax breaks to the oil companies. In Vermont, we passed a bill that required efficiency standards, so appliances use less, not more energy. They don't do anything about that in Congress. And we signed on to global warming reductions of 80% by mid-century. And we also know from our own history that when people put their minds to it, we actually can solve problems. Think about it. The ozone layer was going to vanish, and we passed legislation that has really abated that problem. Smog, we passed clean air legislation. Needs improvement, needs protection from attacks by President Bush, but it actually made a difference. And with global warming, there's never been an issue that has more benefit for more reasons to all of us than if we attack it successfully. Because we know, number one, we have a moral responsibility to protect our environment. So we have to do it to save the planet. We also know that we have to do it because in doing it, we're going to build our economy. Taking on the challenge of addressing global warming issues is going to allow us to create jobs, good paying jobs, for people here in Vermont, for people in America. And we also know it because a major problem that we have, a stranglehold on our options in foreign policy that is leading to the tragic loss of life for many people is because of our totally inappropriate dependence on foreign oil. So this issue for environmental integrity, for economic prosperity, and for foreign policy independence is important like no other. This election will be about whether we're going to have a Congress that is willing to take up the challenge. It's that straightforward. The Republican House, the chair of the Committee of Jurisdiction over Global Warming is a man from Texas by the name of Joe Barton. And what Joe says is this, as long as he is the chair of that committee, there will be no, no, none consideration of global warming legislation. Need another reason to fight for change? But I am so optimistic that if we get new leadership in Congress, the American people are going to rise up and have an institution that's going to respond because people want what you are fighting for. They want a clean environment. They want to reduction, reduce the damage we do to our planet. They want to take on the challenge so that we can create jobs. 
and they know that it's within our capacity to do it. So I am thrilled, uh, Bill, at what you have done, you and the students here at Middlebury have done. And what I also know from my own days, when I was a student activist in the Civil Rights Movement, and this is what I admire about people who do what you're doing. You get involved because it's the right thing. Not because it's good on your resume. Not because you have an expectation or requirement of victory. Because you know when we take on the real important things in life, getting in a relationship with somebody we care about, taking on a cause like global warming, it's not because of a guarantee of what success will be, but it's a commitment personally to work with others to try to achieve success, to help define what it is. In this case, we know it's global warming legislation that's going to reduce the damage we do to the planet, that's going to allow us to create jobs, that's going to allow us to turn our economy around in a way that shows that shows that we have respect for where we live, that we develop local economies that allow us to work together and prosper together. So I ask your help in these final 35 days. I ask you to take a yard sign and put it in your dorm. <laughs> to talk to five people who are not now involved, and I mean this, so many Vermonters are not yet engaged in the urgency of this election, in the decision they have to make. Talk to five people who aren't yet involved and tell them how important it is that they get involved and make a decision. Write a letter to the editor. Come to my office, make phone calls, help us with get out the vote. But please give me some of your time so that we together can be working and demanding of the newly elected Congress that they pass a global warming bill that, beats, that meets the Middlebury-McKibben test. <laughs>